This is one of those tweeners that works where like no other camper does. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with the Apex 213. And this is an RV that it's like, this is extremely rare and it's threading a needle that is almost never threaded. It is a tandem axle, narrow body camper with a slide out and like a private bedroom, less than 4,100 pounds. There just are not a lot of other campers that meet those qualities there. And it's because I think Apex is one of the very few, uh, they're like a dwindling number of builders out there that still have like a true ultralight classic ultralight build where it's a six-sided aluminum frame structure heavy use of lamination uh they're now asdell on the inside and outside layers of those sidewalls uh but this is a member of their nano series which is only seven and a half foot wide yet it's their biggest nano still has a tandem axle again it it just uh, doesn't follow the normal rules of the rv industry you got to remember when you look at this one Everything they're doing is to give you all the big space they can, but in a small camper possible. So there's things like the bathroom's tight, the bedroom's a little tight. It's not the biggest, giantest camper out there. But again, 4,100 pounds of tandem axles and a slide and basically a private bedroom, that's hard to find. But I'm going to kind of share the awesome stuff with the maybe not so awesome stuff and give you a fair view as we go. And when you're ready, hit that subscribe button, and I'd love to hear what you think about this one as we roll through it. And again, the goal with this RV is not necessarily like a zero compromises camping experience or anything like that. It's uh, the goal of being able to include features potentially uh, for someone who already has an existing tow vehicle uh, with as few compromises as possible and making those as minimal as possible. So we're staring at the back of the RV now. Uh, and, and what's kind of cool, like this, I, I think it definitely screams couples camper for sure i could see it being a solid solo camper i could really see somebody kind of converting this over into a little bit of a uh, a desk space although you'll see as we go through there is not storage below that right hand bench nor can you totally remove it uh because there's things like your water heater and a bunch of like systems stuff down there basically now this uh, RV, it has six and a half foot sidewalls, but that little mini vaulted ceiling that it has, I'm not in fisheye lens mode. It really helps open this thing up. Not to mention like, I'm actually gonna sit right over here at what I'm going to call the simulated cinema seat and show you that when you actually plop down in this thing, the window coverage is fantastic. That's actually something I think Apex does very, very well. And this right over here and the windows to the right Overlooking the uh, the campsite, well, and all the way to the right, the back of the RV, but the fact is, giving you decent visibility, I think, where you really want to see it. It's carpetless, it's ventless flooring, and if you know me, the first thing I'd do is I would 86 those two little knee-bashing post legs right there, and I'd, uh, I'd swap on a set of free-floating folding legs that cost like 40 bucks, and you can probably get, I don't know, we probably got them in our store, you can get them off Amazon. That's what I call screwdriver work. That's the kind of stuff that you might see in an Apex. Now, uh, here in the Nano Series, TVs are not standard like they are in the full Apex Ultralight. But if you choose to add a TV, you would slap one up there. It is a little bit high, but again, uh, it's a camper where you're, you know, you're minimizing potential uh, sacrifices. Up here, we do have one of those XL vent fans. Now, the bathroom has its own little mini power vent fan. Um, they put the biggest fan here in the biggest room of the RV, and notice how these are all breeze windows, so that if you really want to maximize your airflow, you can do that. And there's fantastic kitchen countertop prep space in this one. It's actually something I think, ironically, this little camper does better than so many others. But again, I try to point out potential deal breakers or points of concern and or consideration. The Nano series of Apex does not do an oven. They only do microwaves and they only mount them down below the stovetop, nor is there any sort of swaptional ability to change those things out. So that right there might, some people like the idea, hey, I like a low microwave so I don't spill hot soup down my arms. Some people hate a low microwave because they got to bend over to get to it. I'm curious, which camp are you in? Now we're actually looking at, uh, you know, in, in terms of a presidency, we'd call it a lame duck presidency, but this is a, uh, a, a lame duck refrigerator in in c uh whatever i i, I didn't really yeah. think that through i'll work that out my own time but the fact is 
what we're looking at there is the last of the gas electric two-way refrigerators that they're going to be using very very soon and probably by the time this footage publishes it will have already transpired they're going to be going to 12 volt fridges exclusively in these so win lose or draw that's happening thankfully their in, uh, enhanced and expanded solar package will help offset that now, taking a look at this sofa over here, you might notice how they have changed that around to have a couple, like a pair of kick-out incliners. So because that is a step-up slide, a true theater seat is not possible, nor is there really enough room in here to, to do that and, and not feel super enclosed in or anything like that. But the fact is, uh, you can at least kick your feet up. That can fold down into a small sleeper. The dinette will be roughly the same size. So the, uh, the bonus sleeping in this outside of the front bed is going to be, uh, I, I'm going to call it, you know, little kid friendly or big dog friendly, something like that. And I could actually see this being a very cool camper for someone who's like, they solo camp and have like a dog or a cat or, I don't know, an iguana or whatever the case may be. I found that there's a lot of people, some alternative pets out there. And I'm kind of curious, folks that have done that, um, did you turn to RVing as a way to, almost as an alternative to like a house or an apartment so that you wouldn't have to deal with a landlord ha harassing you over your animals. I wonder if that's kind of a trend out there that I've never really noticed uh, and identified. You might have noticed that was a stainless big farm sink over there, so you can actually get big pots and pans in that thing. You can wash a small dog, whatever the case may be. This, however, in the Nano series, does not have central air. Again, a point of consideration to point out here. The fact is, though, um, you know, it's it's not technically a full-on private bedroom. And if you pull that curtain shut, yes, you're going to be limiting the airflow over there. But I think for the most part, with the way that the kitchen and the, the bathroom kind of cut it off and create a hallway, unless you do have some kind of guest of some variety back here in one of your bonus sleepers, I don't know that you're going to need to use that curtain a lot uh, beyond just maybe personal peace of mind. And again, I, I tell you what, I don't know how well the airflow actually works in this. I, I don't mind telling you that. So instead, I'm going to call upon our viewers, people who have actually been in one of these and own one of these and have used one. Do you think the airflow in the bedroom is sufficient? Could you please leave us a note to help everybody else who kind of might be tuning in here? Bedroom breeze across windows are a nice touch. Um, the, the mattress is nothing fantastic. It's a camp queen. It's a backbreaker death wafer. It is what it is. Again, it's a small camper and little screwdriver fixes, little swaps like that, little personal preferential items. They let you kind of pick what you want to do with that. I will tell you though, I have long been very impressed with the, uh, the fit and the finish, generally speaking on apex models, especially considering, you notice how they're not putting trim up on that radius work. There's not gimp trim. It just, it's flush and it fits nicely. That's a good sign. And when I was uh, showing you all the kitchen storage, did you catch that little pro tip where if you wanted to, like if you're shopping, you're like, what kind of cabinetry does this RV have? Did you catch that handy little trick there? Put your phone in selfie mode and then you can actually look right inside the cabinets and you can see for yourself how it's built. Now peeking around at all the storage here, it's got decent storage. You know, your two hanging wardrobe towers. Uh, you do have some outlets on one side of the bed, but I don't really see them on both uh, very readily, which I find interesting. I, I don't know that I personally love that, but I don't know, maybe again, it's not a problem. Uh, there is storage below the bed, but there are no struts to get to it. Uh, with the backbreaker death wafer, it's not hard to lift the mattress and use the platform as a prop like I did right there. I'm not saying everybody should have to do that. I'm just saying it's a, it's a potential. Now, the thing is, with this... RV really, you know, trying not to get too big, too heavy, and only being seven and a half foot wide, they had to go with a classic little angled corner shower in here. And uh, thankfully, it has that skylight. Otherwise, my head would have been punching through the roof of this thing like Dino the dinosaur off of the uh, off the Flintstones. And right now, some Bronto ribs sound pretty darn good. Anyway. The, uh, uh, it is nice, too, that you have a dedicated sink in here. You don't have to wash your bathroom hands in the kitchen sink. Some people don't like that. Uh, there, <laughs> the toilet space, kind of like the shower, it's a little bit tight in there. Um, <laughs> I do like that little pocket for uh, some toilet paper right next to you, though. Um, and the bathroom, again, it does use one of the small fans, but, again, the screwdriver work factor, if I've seen a handful of Apexes coming on trade, I've seen about half of them 
where people have upgraded the bathroom vent fans. Personally, I think that's probably something I would do, but how about you? Now, flipping around the other direction, like if you get out of bed and look over, this is what you might see. You may notice there's TV hookups across from the bed up here. Kind of, how many people would actually put a TV in this bedroom? I don't think I would, but um, you know what? Everybody camps differently. Anyway, I also, if you notice, close the slide because this RV has uh, effectively perfect road mode. You can get to the refrigerator, the kitchen, the bathroom, the dinette. You can do anything and everything in this RV without ever touching the slide button. The slide out just makes the space far more open and nice and easy. Now, by the way, for traveling, it is actually advised, especially when a dinette's all the way back here, a little pro tip for you, take that table down for transit mode, although I don't recommend just leaving the legs on the floor like I've done right there. Put those like in a cabinet, like maybe in that dinette um, side door right there so they don't go, you know, flinging around in the RV and stabbing into your woodwork or anything like that. Now, when we start talking towing on one of these, once again, I think that's one of the major driving factors on an RV like this. Uh, weighing just over 4,100 pounds dry weight and uh, with a 7,500 pound basically GVW, that means that a bigger class tow package SUV, uh, a tow package midsize pickup, uh, may be a viable candidate for something like this. And this is about the biggest RV in terms of physical size that you can start to get for those. And that's again where I think this one threads that needle so nicely. There's just not a lot of, uh, you know, tandem axle RVs with a walk around bed and a slide that a midsize pickup can handle. And if you're doing the math, that means this thing has a serious cargo capacity. And it's long been my experience and my impression, just looking at observational data over the years, the RVs with a bigger cargo capacity, um, they tend to have better service records because the, the running gear, the chassis, the structure is not stressed to the absolute max. Now, if you look in the upper right corner of that pass-through compartment, you see that kind of like white, black, red box. That is the new 30 amp charge controller that'll be handling that new 200 watt solar panel that you can barely see creeping over the roof line uh, right now. Now, I like this camper a lot, but one of the things that it lacks is a roof ladder. Thankfully, I've got a Cougar parked behind it that does have a ladder, and I was able to steal a look at this one's roof from uh, over there. Um, the 30-amp uh, charge controller should be able to be, uh, like you could add a little extra solar to this if you were so inclined. Um, and speaking of like extra things that you might, uh, you know, add or, or whatever, over here under the awning, you do have a gas grill quick connect. So if you want a uh, little propane cooker hooker coming off the side, you could have it. Now look at the, uh, the suspension shackles. They're actually height adjustable. They do ship from the factory in the tallest position, but like if you are trying to get this within, you're like, I got a garage that only opens X feet and inches. I need something that's a little bit lower profile. You actually look like you might be able to shave an inch, inch and a half off of that. Although keep in mind, if you start uh, dropping this thing down, hugging it closer to the ground, you're naturally you know, going to have more of a ground clearance issue. So you, you gotta factor all those things against one another. Uh, it does have four corner stabilizer jacks. You saw the underbelly is enclosed and the awning, to be fair, it is a little bit small, but because it has that bedroom breeze across window and then this big baggage door right here, they just couldn't find an awning that properly, perfectly threaded the needle between that window and that door. So, it's what we got, folks. I, that's, uh, it, it's, well, it's, it's like listening to Sublime. You know, this awning is what I got. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be signing apologies for my terrible singing in the parking lot later today. Now over here in the back corner, you might notice they have standardized the stable steps. Um, notice too how long those legs extend out you're going to have to be on an extremely kittywampus uh, campsite for those steps to not be able to engage, to not be able to use those properly. You've also got the UV tinted windows you may notice to help keep the uh, sunshine and the nosy neighbors out of this thing. Because there's nothing like your neighbor, uh, Ted, next door going, man, uh, that dinner you guys had last night was delicious. Can I get the recipe? And you're like, uh, Ted? We had uh, the doors closed and we ate inside last night. How do you know what we had for dinner? And, you know, you find out they're peeking through the windows. Nice little Creep Factor 5 moment right there. Uh, real quick, you may notice 
with the kitchen and the bathroom placement on this one, it has but a single stink pickle depository uh, coming out just in front of the tires over here. You don't have two sewer hookups. You've also got black tank flush, uh, a uh, um, outside shower as well. Sorry, my brain totally <laughs> faded there. I'm seeing the first snowflakes of the season, and it's just got me, frankly, I'm just not happy about it. It's. I mean, you live in Michigan, you're going to get snow, but it's just got me thrown off. Um, you've got a triple sealed slide system. That's pretty common in the industry, but I like the rough textured slide walls that they put on these. And speaking of walls, the side walls are now double Asdell, which is, I never know how to phrase this. They're Asdell on the inside and outside layering of the walls. They don't use twice as much Asdell. Well, you know, actually compared to what they used to do, yeah, I guess they do technically use twice as much Asdell, but I think you get it. Is there a better way I can describe that so I can stop sounding so stupid or do I just keep sounding stupid? Sorry, sometimes I just get stuck in these loops and I'm like, well, you just sound stupid. Guess this is your life now. Now this is usually the point in the video where I say, check the links in the video description for similar campers. You can watch more videos. But there's, <laughs> there's not a whole lot else like this out here. It's a little bit of a Unicornosaurus Rex and Maybe that's what I like about it so much. I see the same things all day, every day. I get really excited when I get to see something new or different or just a little left of center from a manufacturer. So let me know what you think about it. And until next time, folks, thanks for tuning in once again. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.